So, so a lot of what I wanted to talk about today is really I wanted to talk about my sort of transition into understanding uh, web media and being a designer in web media and, and a visual thinker in web media. And, and I, um, what we just heard was someone who, who it took her a while to get to cozy up to uh, Gutenberg. And I feel just the opposite. I was really thankful when there was a, uh, a modular um, building um, tool that came out. Well, first, before we actually get into the tools, I just want to talk about some simple process points that you may already know. Um, obviously, when we're talking about um, designing for the web, we're kind of building a spaceship, right? We're doing something that's a little bigger than just a, a single image or a single panel or a single message. We're, we're, you know, we're designing kind of a system. But us as designers, we're thinking visually, and we're we're kind of getting uh, uh, very very obsessed with things like color and, and imagery. Whereas a developer would do the same thing when it comes to building. They would think about how they could use their tools to build. Um, so uh, basic design objective it might be stating the obvious, but. Um, when you start with your design process, you really want to just think, who are you accommodating? What is the site for? Um, working with that in mind, is it a brochure site? Is it an e-commerce site? Is it a portfolio site? Is it just an academic information site? Things like that uh, are very critical because you're going to bring your design sensibility to this uh, and you may forget about what the objective is. That happens. It's happened to me. Uh, I'm always thinking of, of visual ideas first, they're always clicking around in my head, uh, and I don't always think right away of, well, the, the client has a certain objective in mind. Uh, of course, keeping it simple, always work towards elegant solutions. Elegant solutions are things where you do not overplay your functionality or uh, your screen behavior. Really try to keep things so that it does not get in the way of the message. Oftentimes, when I design product sites or, or e-commerce sites or things like that, if I have strong imagery, I'm halfway there. If I have something where I have an impactful uh, series of photographs, most of my work, I feel, is done. So I just kind of get out of the way and let the images do as much of the work as possible. Um, let's see. Working with the browser. Okay, so working with the browser, we want to understand how the browser behaves. We want to understand what we're, we're going to accomplish when we display our images and how they're going to interact with the browser. I had someone call me the other day, uh, and it was weird to hear this phone call because I never think of this stuff because we do it all the time. But he was developing, he was building a site for a client, and he had some, um, some questions with a full width image. So he had this image, the image that the client wanted in there that was kind of a, a vertical volume type of image, and what the client wanted a full width browser image. So it was the, the question, how do you get all that to work with the browser? Well, sometimes you don't. You really have to accommodate the image first. So if your image is a certain proportion, you have to make that work with the browser. So those are all tricks that, that you have to think about as you're getting into it. So if the client is really obsessing over a certain image, you want to make sure that you can uh, accommodate with that with the browser. If not, you have to revisit the image, um, and then you have, to, uh, you have to make it work with the browser either by uh, modifying the image or uh, thinking about a different approach in your design of the browser. Um, making it work for mobile, everybody knows this, right? But uh, we all design for mobile first, however, um, one of the things that uh, I've discovered, and this was a very hard lesson for me, because again, I'm I'm thinking of you know all four corners of my composition. I'm thinking of things within the rectangle, within the space, and so when I'm when I'm having to design uh, a site that behaves both on mobile and in uh, the basic desktop environment. I find that incredibly frustrating because I, you know, I want to use the whole space. But the fact is, we are designing very differently now. So we'll look at samples of this in a minute. Um, 
uh, designing for your clients. Of course, we're designers, right? We want to think about the artistic objective. Uh, the client wants to think about how many units they can move. How can you do both? The client is really uh, there to work with you and you are there to work with the client. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, how to communicate with the client and how to get the best results you can. Uh, a lot of times you, you sort of have to protect the client from themselves. They, they really, they're just trying to do good things, right? But what we're trying to do is uh, educate them, guide them, move them along in a direction so that they can get the best results from your time. Um, driving consistency throughout your site. Uh, working to make the site uh, feel cohesive, right? You want it to feel like uh, everything is connected. You want it to feel like it's a, a, a part of a series, a general series. So from page to page, from image style to image style, uh, to type choice, to color, things like that. Um, one of the things we've been doing is a site overview in the landing page. And we can look at samples of this in a second, but uh, the landing page now is, is no longer needs to be above the fold. So we work to, uh, as you scroll down into the page, you are given the overview of the site. Another point I'd like to make is trusting the power of images. Images are impactful. They are mighty. Uh, how you select your images, well, you know, and the thing is, you know, people say, well, you know, it's just a stock photograph. Well, it took three hours and several phone calls to get just the right image, just the right selection, uh, just the right attitude, the tone, and if there's people in it, there's models, things like that. Those are all very critical, and uh, we want to talk about how to make those work. Leverage typography, which I talked a little bit about earlier. Uh, making, uh, making type work for you. Don't just think of it as, well, the text goes here. And that's a common mistake for people who are building a site or designing a site maybe for the first time, or maybe they don't have the luxury of a design background. Uh, typography is always secondary, or sometimes completely falls off the table and just kind of uh, parked in a convenient spot. Try to look at typography as form. Uh, I like to think of it as almost like architecture when you're designing it. Um, unearth iconography. Um, iconography is really, really useful in the web, okay? The, 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 um, the simple truth is people don't read. They rarely read the screen. They might, once they go in a little deeper, they might actually start to read and look at things as editorial content. But when you're trying to bring the reader in, you want them to have cues, visual cues, iconography will, um, will help with this tremendously. Um, the constant search for new tools, which is part of what we're here for, right? We want to uh, we want to always, always explore tools, especially in WordPress. So that means plugins, design um, aids, any, and there's tons of them out there. Uh, if we had more time, I would love to, to cover as many of these. In fact, what I would like to do is put this out to everyone who's in this room to tell me how they, what tools they like to use and how they use them. And I'll bet you we would all learn a lot. Um, unfortunately, we're limited. So what we're going to do is just work with some of the tools that, that we use on a regular basis um, with our crew. And experiment and self-publish. That is extremely important anytime you get a chance to do something that is uniquely yours. Don't wait for the client to say, hey, we're trying to, we need a, you know, we need a, a grid portfolio or we need, you know, we need to embed a slideshow here and we want something to work. How do I do that? And then what happens to a lot of designers is they wait until they're asked to solve a problem before they actually go in and try to figure it out. Do this stuff on your own. Try to do it early and often. Make these things uh, work. Break them, of course. You know, find ways uh, to uh, do things that you haven't done before. So what I wanted to do, uh, the way I've kind of organized, yes? Just a quick question about sure. typography. Um, how do you, as a designer, keep yourself from falling in love with like, just two or three fonts? Um, or well, I, the answer is I have a very difficult time doing it. I, 
I work probably with a very narrow selection of fonts. I don't know if everyone, everyone heard the question, but how do you, how do you broaden your range of type use, right? Uh, typography is, is extraordinary stuff. And, um, you know, people spend hours and hours of time, you know, crafting a character. And sometimes they're just, they're just so beautiful. But um, what I find myself doing is I tend to lean on the same, for, I used Universe for about 11 years straight, and I didn't really stray from that. But I, I had to force myself to, to like pick up that syrup typeface, whatever. Things like typography, um, there's gonna be a few go-to fonts that you have, and as well you should. You, know, you wanna use them uh, in a way that you feel confident with. Um, but again, one of the things that I learned from, from teaching was that the students that I was working with, they were using all uh, a whole different range of fonts, and they were finding stuff that, they, um, that I would never have chosen, but they, they got great results. So the thing is, you, get, you tend to get very narrow, but you just, what you have to do is just try it and give it a chance, and then and if the client likes it, maybe you know, you're halfway there. Um, all right, so I, I wanted to talk about the process a little bit. Um, you know, we're, I, I could talk for hours about this, this whole subject. You know, processes and tools is an expansive subject that we can really get a lot of leverage out of. Um, but what I wanted to do is just talk about some basic tools. So when we're designing, Right, so we, I, I have a little studio in South Philly called Row House Studio, and there's three of us, and we're all designers, and we lean heavily on, on certain tools. Um, some tools we buy, some tools we get for free, uh, but we're always trying to find things out that, that we like. Um, so, of course, the first, um, the first thing we do, we do, we do a lot of work for different clients. Some of them are... Yeah. Some of them are corporate clients, some of them are small businesses. We do a lot of work for Penn and Wharton, um, and that has its own little sort of uh, way of, of happening. Uh, but one of the things we'll do is we'll, we'll start by um, working with um, sketching out the site, right? So here, this is a, this is a site that that's, uh, we're doing for Wharton. It's a monstrosity of a site, right? It's enormous. Uh, and they, we, our, our whole process was trying to wrangle the site. Um, all these things, I, I, have all, I have most of these things in this blog post for, for this course. If you guys want, I can, I can give you that after a while. So what, one of the things we tried to do with this site was we tried to just kind of wrestle all this information to the ground and break it down into a diagram. And it was not easy. But we use this tool called Go Mockingbird. Um, they give you a free, they do give you a free version. I think you might get one, you can get one project. I, I have, uh, I think I have a package where I can do three projects at a time. The reason why I like this, so this is a wireframing kind of design tool and it's really fast, but the best thing is, I mentioned there's three of us, we work in a room. We can all work on this at one time sitting at our individual screens and I really like that. So. You know, I might be talking to Noah at my left or Serena at my right, and we might say, well, listen, let's move, let's change the nomenclature. Uh, let's, let's move the labeling around. And we can do this right from, from our desks because it'll change in real time. So the nice thing about that is I'll send this to the client. Now, most clients are intimidated by this. They don't really, they just say, just do everything. I just want you to do everything. I don't really want to be bothered with, with thinking about this. Just you know, do everything and present it to me, and I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like. OK, that's good. But sometimes I work with clients, or I work with writers, and the writers want to make changes. right? So instead of them you know, putting little post-it notes on my PDF, which is the way we used to work, we'll work in this way. And so now my writer is going to come across, and she's going to go in, and she's going to rewrite the labeling for this. So she'll just write it right in there. So that's good. And then, then when we're, we're kind of figuring out our structure for the site, um, she can just, you know, she can kind of come in. So this works really simply. You just double click. And so if we want to change admissions to, let's say, let's change that to apply. Right? 
So now it's been updated in real time and we can all work on this together. So this is a really good, we get really facile with how we kind of break down our diagrams. And when you have big sites like this, that's, that is really important because it's a mess when you get into your mock-ups and or you get into your page development and then you find out that, you know, well, we didn't really like the structure of this anyway. So, so what I do is I try to insist that, that the, the client spends a little time looking at this so we know where we're going. Um, then once we kind of wrap that up, we move to another tool that I really like. This is called Slate Maps. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet. It's really just a CSS, and it's free. Um, you can just go to, uh, if you just do a site for uh, a search for Slick Map, you'll find that this guy has been posting this for many years. It's really great. Uh, you download it and you just go in the back end and everything is in CSS and HTML. And so you can, you can get this all together and then just upload it to a site. And then you can present the client with a very, you know, finished looking um, uh, diagram. Now, of course, we could do this in Illustrator. We've all done that. Uh, actually, I like to work in InDesign. I feel much faster in InDesign, uh, but Illustrator is good too. But for the, the nice thing about this is that it's live and it's online. And again, it's one of those things where you can make changes to when the client's looking at it. Um, some other tools I like to, to work with, this is a tool called Xscope. Has anybody used Xscope before? Uh, Xscope is really, it's a great screen tool. Um, is that for me? Yeah. Oh, really? We're that, we're that? Yeah, we're running a little short on time. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Oh, man, I'm going to have to do this really fast. Okay, Xscope, great tool. Uh, you can, all these are all uh, screen tools that you can actually measure on your screen. Has anybody ever tried to do that? You kind of just... So you can do all these, get all these dimensions. You can you can find out about text. You can find out about colors. Great stuff, right? Sketch is another tool that I don't even have the time to get into, but a lot of people love this tool. We're just starting to use it now. Um, what that allows you to do is create mockups uh, for your 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 web design projects. And then you can hand them over to the developer, or if you are the developer, you can, you can hand them to the client and get mobile views and everything like that. All right, um, I'm gonna work quickly here. Uh, so content and ideas, right? We, uh, we all, uh, while you're designing, you wanna populate your site with content, right? What kind of content do you wanna populate with? Images, uh, copy, iconography, um, Brands and brands of the world, those are pretty common websites. I'm sure you guys have seen those. This is kind of cool. It's, you know, you can, you can download, you know, common household names, brands through vector files, things like that. Great stuff. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, one of my favorite new tools is the Noun Project. Has anybody heard of the Noun Project? Great stuff, right? This is really, this is like, this is gold to me because remember I was telling you about icons and using icons in your design. So you can get a free version of this, but you can search for your icon and it'll bring it, you know, so let's say you want an icon on, you know, networking. So it'll give you a series of icons. You can download these in an SVG file or a PNG file. Uh, sometimes I'll use this just for ideas. So this is, a, this is really a breakthrough. I mean, when you think about you know, design, like when we used to research design, we would spend hours just you know, scouring you know, design publications and image libraries. So now the fact that you, know, you can just kind of pull stuff up and look at it is pretty amazing. So that's the noun project. There, there's other things like that for icons. But that has by far been my favorite. Um, all right, so color, like tools that I like to use for color. Um, so when, I'm, when you're building for the web, right, you're always thinking of hex colors. Make use of your color scales, and um, a lot of your, your hex colors can be found here. I find this to be much faster than just trying to, you know, 
uh, go into uh, a palette, pick a color, and then refresh your screen. I like to kind of work with this. W3 Schools also has one of these. If you guys are familiar with that, this is a really good one. Actually, the thing that I like most about it, um, I use a lot of really soft grays. Uh, oftentimes, when you want to distinguish between you know, panels in your website, you want to kind of uh, separate them with just subtle changes. Remember, elegance is one of the things we're after. So I may just look at various uh, versions of soft gray or white. All right. So that brings me, we, we, can, we can talk forever about color. It's a great subject. But what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about some of these uh, page builder themes. So one of the things we started using this last couple of years, I think, and we're, we're, we're still sneaking up on Gutenberg, but we're not quite there yet. We've been using a, a page builder called Divi. Um, Wharton, we, which is uh, one of our clients, uses a page builder called Visual Composer. Um, it's okay. It's a little wooden, a little bit stiff. Again, we're designers. I count on the developers to do all the heavy lifting, and then we kind of come in and just make use of their tools. Uh, we use Divi because it's a modular uh, design interface, and if you're a designer, you love that stuff, right? So um, check it out. I, ha I think I have a, um, I have, where is my, let's go look at the back end of Divi really quickly. Oh, did I write the lot down? Okay, hold on one second, stay with me. So, uh, does anybody else use page builders? If they like? Any, anything strikes your fancy? Um, I use Beaver Builder. Beaver Builder School, I have that on my list. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we've been using this mostly because we're, um, we're familiar with it. The other reason I like Divi is because the guy who, uh, who, who devised it really uh, uh, is, a, I think he's a very talented designer. So out of the box, it looks pretty good. You know, the type is, is all the decisions are kind of made for you. But that said, there is a tremendous amount of uh, leverage that you have in this in, um, in all aspects of this. So uh, if we're just looking at pages, so we can look at, uh, let's look at our home page. Now this is just uh, our, our studio site. So the, the thing that I like about it is that, so this is your back end, right? So you can, you can label everything, it's all done in modules. You set up rows, you drop in images, uh, and then, then each item that you use has a very nuanced set of tools that will allow you to make modifications however you see fit. So when I was telling you earlier about um, giving your overview on the site, uh, allowing the user to get into various places on the, within the site from the home page, um, this is one of those examples. Another thing that we do, uh, so um, let's see we can, if I can find this. So the site that we are working on for, um, yeah, I'm running out of time here. All right. Let me, so this is a big mess of a site that we're working on for Wharton. So a lot of times, um, what we'll do in sites like this is we will just create these very deep scrolls that have panels that will get you into the site. Now, when we actually, I don't know if I'm going to let me to get there now. All right, I'm going to move on from this. Let me go back to, here's one that we did for, uh, so again, a lot of times we're just working. Now, this guy, this guy's a sculptor, and he gave us gorgeous images. So we did very little. We, we just really worked with the power of his images 
and um, that got us where we needed to go. Is that built with Divi? These are, these are built in Divi, yeah, right. Um, so again, this is another site where it's just a lot of, this is a product site. Um, this is kind of, this woman just has a little kind of homemade craft business. But we just really, really just work with photography, things like that. Another tool that we like in Divi, or I'm sorry, in WordPress that I should mention, is uh, all-in-one migration. So what we'll do is we'll diagram a site, sketch it out, um, develop it, get it as close as possible to where the client can look at it and think about it and make comments, and then we'll, you know, we'll put it up in a subdomain and give the client something to look at, and then we'll move it um, from the uh, from the dev site to the final uh, domain, and we do that with this tool called All-in-One uh, WordPress Migration, which is an awesome tool for moving sites. I highly recommend it. It's free, and as far as I can tell, it's bulletproof. Um, are we up, or, do, or is that five more? That's five. Five more? Yeah, we're gonna do it. That's very nice. Um, uh, plugins, uh, everybody has their favorite plugins, right? Um, Trying to see if there's anything else we can talk about here. Uh, without getting, I'm trying to keep it in the in the design um, topic. <coughs> These are things that most people already know about. Uh, let me move on to. So uh, sandbox sites are great. So one of the things we do in sandbox sites is we try to play with things like parallax. And we explore those. And these are all just different ways of uh, understanding how to dispense information and how to work with those. Um, some other things that we like to do is, uh, so here's a site that we just did for a client. Let me just show you this. So this is a design client of ours. They have a little design studio. They wanted us to build their site. So one of the things that we did was we worked with um, just a range of dividers, like ways of dividing up their panels. So th this is their portfolio site. And all we really wanted to do was just have this series of panels that flows by and just displays their, their content in a way that works well. Um, and then at the bottom, we deliver uh, the navigation. We repeat the navigation of the portfolio with, uh, with iconography. Um, we might be out of time. Let me see if I can sneak in one or two more things. Um, All right, um, let's see. I think that that's probably gonna do it for at least my, my presentation. Are there any, any questions, anything you guys like to talk about? Is anybody, uh, is there, are there tools that somebody uses that they like better than something that we just showed here? Does anybody use a, uh, any kind of a mapping tool or a diagram tool that they'd like to talk about? Uh, well, I was gonna say we use Lucidchart a lot, but I. Like the look of this mockingbird. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, it's so easy. The thing that I like about mockingbird, and one of the things that I didn't get to show you was um, on, on mockingbird, you know, you, you have this whole set of elements and you just kind of pull them in. And, you know, it's, it's all the things that really work with, you know, so obviously we use a lot of these, these kind of panels here when we're doing our diagrams and then you just drop your type in. And again, the, the nice thing about it is that you can work with um, your team as you're doing it, or you can work with your client as you're doing it. Yes, sir? Uh, I got a couple of tools uh, that I kind of always go with. Even if it's like building themes, or right. if you're just using like a Vanilla theme, 
um, sometimes you, you find like your post types or you want to create custom post types or right. like fields on the right. page. Uh, two plugins that I use is advanced custom fields. Um, they have a advanced custom fields, yeah, we use that as well. Yeah. But if you want to get repeatable, it's, a, it's paid, but it's a really great tool. You pay once and you can, it's free forever. Huh. Uh, and the second one is just custom post types. It's great. Right. It's a up. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that gives you great range. I, I mean, a lot of the times we will we'll use this stuff. The reason why we like it is we'll work really fast and, and loose. And that's why we kind of like this stuff. So this brings us back to working as designers. When I first started building websites, I didn't really like the counterintuitive aspect of it because we just wanted immediate results. And when you build, it has to be done in this process that's a, a lot more deliberate. Yes? Okay. And what's neat is that it, it presents you with a, a basic color, starting on palette of five colors. That's a great and every idea. time you hit a space bar, it generates a whole new set of colors. Mm -hmm. And as you start to light a particular color, you can lock it down. And then only the other four will change, et cetera. What's or you can put your own, if you know that you have one or two client colors, that you put in your hex values, and then uh, lock those down. And then See the other two change until you find a palette. Wow, I, I'm seeing this for the first time. Yeah. 